Okay, Tacoma Comics here. Hello, everybody. Um, doing something different today. I am doing a <laughs> a recorded edit video, edited video, which is something I very rarely, rarely do. But uh, going to go back to my roots and skip the live for a little bit today. Um, wanted to show you stuff that I got at the Washington Toy Show. Uh, very small show at the Puyallup Fairgrounds, which is where the Washington Summer. Um, show is the that's like Washington summer con is huge compared to this one this was um a decent amount of sellers and only five six guests um signing which was beautiful because the lines were small um and a lot of them were toy people getting pop signed I was one of the few people getting comics signed which was really nice um and so overall it was really nice went with my son got there early it paid a little bit more to get in early but I think it was worth it to beat some of the crowds maybe it wasn't I don't know but we were done by lunchtime, which was great. We went and had some yummy sushi afterwards. So let me show you what I got there. Um, first booth I went to had comics for $3, about 15 short boxes, or uh, two for five, right? $2.50 each. So I picked up a number of really good comics. New Mutants 14, first Ileana Rasputin in uh, New Mutants. And I'm excited about that one because I think I'm missing that. I think I had a crappy copy. So I think that's a PC book. I need to even check. Um, this is just a, a flip book, but uh, sorry, I get that light out. There we go. That is the first full appearance of Bishop in the X-Men, X-Men 283. Some G.I. Joe that I needed. Speaking of G.I. Joe, uh, the lady who did the voice of Scarlet was there, and the gentleman who did the voice of um, Duke was there. I did not get my G.I. Joe one signed. Um, just didn't feel like it, and I had to make a limit on what I was doing trying to finish the 50 issue unbeatable squirrel girl run there is a variant for number four i normally wouldn't have gotten that one it doesn't speak to me but it was two dollars and fifty cents there's issue 20 and these are out of order now there we go there's issue 22 a little uh kazar um homage and then there's issue 24 those are all pc books this one is a little bit of a flip uh 1602 is going to be part of one of the storylines in What If Season 2. If you have not read this, go grab a set. It's really worth it. Grab the trade paperback. It's Neil Gaiman writing the Marvel story from the point of view of Marvel characters who've been shifted in time uh, to 1602. So you've got like Peter Parquois um, instead of Parker and, and stuff like that. It's really, really good. Well done. A couple uh, adventures season two number i think 10 and then number 13 from season one i kind of low-key collect those um this one i i i don't i already have um but it's like a bigger book 15 dollar book it's i guess the first venom and, and wolverine or something so i grabbed that these were marvel comics presents that i need i am collecting these by the way you know i sold my um spawn newsstand collection because i just figured i was never going to finish it there was a guy there that had some spawn newsstands like in the 90s and stuff nothing past 100 but had a lot of the gaps that i i had needed previously so perhaps that would have been good to do who knows um that guy's booth though i did get some other stuff from that i really really wanted and i've hesitated on buying recently either because i can't find it or because it's been too expensive on ebay and i just after shipping and taxes, it's like... So, this is Star Wars from the 2015 um, run by Marvel. This is issue 75, The obviously the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. Very hard book to find. Couple sales on eBay from the United Kingdom for like $40 plus $20 shipping, and I'm rounding down. Um, so I got that for $15 because even though the price tag says 30, it was, um, there we go. It was half off the, uh, price tag. And then the other one I got, I probably overpaid for, um, this is a beautiful copy though. Um, but since I don't slab, well, actually not with that corner, it's not, <laughs> this is just a nine, four copy. This is the first, um, issue of Usagi Jimbo from the second volume first volume was with Fantagraphics that went into the 30s I think this one was only 16 long before he went to Dark Horse where he had 160 issue run um, but uh, I hadn't been able to find this recently and I'm collecting all Usagi don't ask me why I love Usagi <laughs> it's a really cool character um, 
great, easy to digest stories, just lots of fun, um, very consistent, so you know what you're getting. So for $25, I got that, probably overpaid by about $10 or $15, to be honest, but I just haven't been able to find it, and I don't want to go to eBay if I, if I can help it. Okay, here's what I came for today, and the reason I went to the Washington Toy Show, if I'd only gotten this, I would have been happy. Canaan issue six. Uh, if you're not familiar, short history. This is the absolute first full appearance of these characters in a comic book. All of them appear on a preview page in issue five, like coming next. And they also all appear at the end of issue one, where you realize that the story is being told from Canaan's point of view to the, the uh, crew of the ghost. Okay. Um, on that page, some of them speak... Uh, some of them don't. They all have, the ones that speak have like one line. So whether that's a cameo or first full appearance is a big, long question that nobody's ever going to answer because it's an opinion question. The market dictates this book. I went with this book because it's got the characters on the cover. And that's kind of what was more important to me. So what did I get signed? At the bottom here in green, I had Hera, who is green colored character. Um, and I'm so embarrassed, like, I'm having a mind blank. I can't remember the, the uh, voice actress's name. Uh, but she was really cool. She came out, did some crowd work because her square reader for credit cards wasn't working in the beginning. Um, and what she wrote was, um, my home is my crew and my family, which uh, is important. It's an important quote to me, and I'll tell you why in a moment when I get through all of this. But first... $60 for the signature, and they all charge the same. $20 for a six-word quote, up to six words. That's an eight-word quote. They wouldn't give me the other two words for free. And I, I kind of needled her um, her agent, because if you've never been to a big signing like this, they all have agents who um, handle the money and handle the payments and stuff. And it was like a younger kid, so I kind of pushed. And when I say younger, maybe in their 20s, that's young to me. I'm like, hey, can I just get the two words for five bucks more? You know, I'm, I'm wheedling. They asked their manager, who was like running all three booths, and he's like, nope, that's going to be 20. So I didn't I didn't argue. I didn't want to be that dick who's like arguing in front of his like voice actor heroes because uh, that's just not cool. So I got that. And then um, up here, I had uh, Sabine who wears a purple helmet and purple colored uh, outfit, write, what happened to your real family? And then she signed her name, Taya's, uh, Taya Sakara, and then wrote Sabine. Um, and then Ezra over here, Taylor Briggs, responded, the empire. The empire happened to my family, right? Or sorry, the empire, what happened to your family? So kind of turned it, did I get that right? What happened to yours? Sorry, I'm reading it backwards and I'm, doubting myself so again what happened to your real family the empire what happened to yours and then there's that hair quote about family so if you know this story of star wars rebels if you've seen the animated show all four seasons or even just the first season even just the first couple episodes you know that this is a book uh, sorry this is a story that is about family okay zeb who i didn't get because he wasn't there he um is the last of his race. The Lasat have all been wiped out. Ezra was left on the streets um, all alone since he was seven and his parents were taken by the Empire. Sabine, something happened with her and um, she actually worked uh, against the Mandalorians for the Empire for a while and felt super guilty about that. Kanan was a Jedi that escaped Order 66. Hera's family is under siege um, by the Empire. So they all are kind of lost and looking for, for home and family and togetherness. And they find that with each other and being rebels against the Empire. So I love getting these color quotes signed. I love meeting the voice actors. Absolutely love that. But it was expensive. Not nearly as expensive as this one. This is just like the prime piece in my collection. And starting down here, we have Ahsoka Tano, played by Ashley Eckstein. I am no Jedi. If you know Clone Wars, you know why that quote is so powerful. Um, down here, 
Uh, you have Matt Lantner, who did the voice of Skywalker, saying your reckless little one, which I kind of feel like is <laughs> what he's saying to her, because this is her in her Snips outfit when she was really a young Padawan and had just just met them all. Um, up here, I've got the voice of Captain Rex and all the clones, Dee Bradley Baker. In my book, experience outranks everything, which is a little smudged, but you can still see it. And then over here, you have um, Obi-Wan, who is uh, James James Arnold Taylor. I don't want to say James Taylor. I'm thinking the folk thing is James Arnold Taylor, I believe. And it says, it takes strength to resist the dark side. So here's the question to you all now, 10 minutes into this video. I love these books. These books are never leaving my PC. These books are going right there sorry i can't reach it right there um and we'll stay there forever i did not pay money to get these books slabbed i did not pay money to get them witnessed i did not send them into cbcs to get them authenticated when i'm in my 60s or seven, God, my 60s is nine years away when i'm in my 70s these will probably go to my kids as like heirloom presents um and they may not be worth that much because you know you have to convince somebody that the signatures are real and authentic so was i stupid not to get them I mean, i'm pretty sure i wasn't that's my personal feeling uh but i'd love to hear your arguments or your comments below on what you think i should have done with this there was there was no cgc or cbcs at this con but there was a signature authenticator who if you could get a sticker from the people and then bring it over to him and um, for some amount of money, they would give you a certificate saying that it's re authentic. Um, I just, I resisted that. Maybe I resisted it a little stupidly or stubbornly. It's not what these books are about to me. They, you know, the story means so much more. Meeting the people who've brought these characters to life meant so much more. And so I just kind of resisted going that way. But I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I know I've already talked to some of my friends in the community and, and I've heard what they think about it. Some totally get it. Some are like, should have gotten it slapped and witnessed. Doesn't matter because um, you never know what's going to happen. And they're right. So I want to hear from you. Thanks very much for listening and paying attention. I'll talk to you soon.